we're going to go through the comparison test for determining whether infinite series converge or diverge. So imagine we're given a sequence. We form an infinite sum by summing the terms of the sequence, which is called a series. We're trying to determine whether, when we do this infinite sum, the sum converges or diverges. Before we plow into using the comparison test, it's always worth first checking whether or not the terms themselves of the sequence decrease to zero. We know that the terms need to decrease to zero to give us a chance of the infinite sum to converge. It's not guaranteed that it converges just because the terms tend to zero, but we should check that. So let's assume we've already checked that now. So here's our theorem, the comparison test. Suppose we have a series, the sum from 1 to infinity of ak, and we've got two other things. One is a convergent series bk, and one is a positive real number m, such that the following property holds. The modulus of each of the ak terms is less than or equal to m multiplied by the, the bk terms, which has to be true for all k beyond some point q. The conclusion of the theorem is that the sum ak, the infinite series, converges. So now that we've seen this, this theorem, we're going to think about what this theorem means, and here we're going to call this the model. So this is the model for the comparison. This is a translation of the maths into, into words to understand what it means. So what it really means is we've got some series, and this series, which is m multiplied by the sum from k equals 1 to infinity of bk, which we could also write as the infinite sum of k equals 1 to infinity of mbk, which converges. So here we have a series which converges, and each of the terms are positive. That's not too hard to arrange. The series then formed by the ak's has terms which, according to the theorem, have to be smaller in some way than the, the mbk's. What, this, what the theorem says is that all of these terms, so all the terms, the ak's, all of which need to be smaller in modulus, so they're smaller in modulus than what? Than the terms of the mbk sequence, than the mbk's. So the partial sums of the, of the terms of the ak need to converge more easily than the sums of the mbk's, which themselves already do converge. So because the, the mbk's converged and the ak's were in some sense smaller, that made the ak's converge. So the key point here was that we needed to think of another sequence, these bk's, whose terms, possibly after being scaled by m, are larger in modulus than the ak terms. And of course, we had to choose a bk which was convergent. So those are the two things we've got to think about. So in order to use this, we're going to need to have some useful convergent series available to us to use as our potential bk's. So as a quick reminder, here's a few geometric series with a common ratio r. They look like this. And we know they converge if the modulus of r is less than 1. Another useful series is the series bk is 1 over k squared for all k. And then this infinite series, this converges. Incidentally, its value is pi squared over 6. And more generally, as a more general version of part 2, when p is positive and bigger than 1, we can form this infinite series, sum of 1 from 1 to infinity of 1 over k to the p, and this converges for all p bigger than 1. So this gives us a few useful convergent series as our potential bk's to use in our theorem. So let's do an example now. So here's an example. Here's an infinite series, sum from 1 to infinity, cos k over, co over k cubed. So we stare at this a while, and we decide it looks a lot like 1 over k cubed. Let's choose bk equal 1 over k cubed. Is that going to be any good? Yes. The sum from 1 to infinity of this bk converges. 
so that's good for us. What about M? We're going to choose, in this case, M equal to 1. And now we're going to look at the modulus of the AK terms. What's that equal to? The modulus of cos K over K cubed to the modulus of cos K over k cubed, which is less than or equal to 1 over k cubed, since the modulus of cos k is always less than or equal to 1. And this is nothing less than mbk. So each ak term in modulus is less than or equal to the mbk's as we required. So what we've seen is these ak's in modulus are less than or equal to mbk for all k, where we chose m and, m and bk, and importantly the sum of the bk's from k is 1 to infinity converged. So we're able to use the comparison test to deduce that our series AK converged. The sum of cos K over K cubed from K equals 1 to infinity converges. It's worth noting here that we haven't actually found the limit, we've purely just shown that it converges by comparing it to something else that converges. So let's do one more example. This looks slightly more complicated. We stare at this function, so looking at this infinite sum, we've got sine 3k on the top, 2 to the k plus 1 on the bottom, and a factor of 4. So you want to stare at this for a while and have a think about, is it smaller or bigger than some series we know? In this case, after a bit of thought, I'm going to choose bk to be 1 over 2 to the k. Is that a convergent series? Yes, it is. It's a half plus a quarter plus a, an eighth, etc. This is finite, this converges. It's actually got the value 1. Now we're going to try and compare this to this. It's quite similar. These terms actually look a bit smaller because they've got a larger denominator, although there's a factor of 4 on the top. So let's choose m to equal 4 to try and cope with the 4 sine 3k. And now let's look at the modulus of ak. This is equal to the modulus of 4 sine 3k over 2 to the k plus 1, which is equal to 4 into the modulus of sine 3k, all over 2 to the k plus 1. We're trying to aim here towards m multiplied by bk, and try and show this is less than it. So we've seen the modulus of ak, was 4 the modulus of sine 3k over 2 to the k plus 1. Before we notice that 2 to the k plus 1 is only going to make ak smaller, I can make this bigger by not dividing by something quite so large. Just putting 2 to the k. This is good, this is my bk. And this is less than or equal to 4 multiplied by 1 over 2 to the k. Why? Because sine is always between minus 1 and plus 1, so its modulus is less than or equal to 1. And this again is none other than m multiplied by bk. So by the comparison test, we've shown that all the ak's 
are less than or equal to mbk's in modulus. So we can deduce that the ak's converge. So we've shown that the sum of 4 sine 3k all over 2k plus 1 converges. As a quick summary, we asked the question, why did we use the comparison test? So for this infinite series, we were able to spot that it looked quite a lot like 1 over k cubed, which itself converged. We were also able to spot that this cos k factor on the top only made the term smaller in modulus, or occasionally equal if the modulus was equal to 1. But the modulus of cos k is no bigger than 1, so this didn't make it worse, and we could choose n equal to 1. What about the other example? For the second example, we spotted that the sum of 1 over 2k converged, and this sum here looks slightly smaller than the 1 over 2 to the k because of the plus 1. We're worried about the factor of 4, but if we choose m to be 4, then this factor 4 sine 3k is no bigger than 4 for any k. So we're going to be OK. So there were, three, there were three steps. It was spotting that 2 to the k was going to be a good comparison series, using this result to check that it, 2, k plus, 2 to the k plus 1 only made it smaller, and dealing with the top, which was always no bigger than 4. So there we have it. We've used the comparison test in two different cases. We've seen why we used it in those cases. We've seen a model for what the idea of the comparison test is. So hopefully in future, you can think of ways of answering questions involving the comparison test. Thank you.